so you should now see uh, my screen. You have on the left side my presentation and on the right side uh, our studio server uh, where I will probably do a little uh, live coding, but not too much because you know how dangerous it is to do some live coding during this kind of presentation. Um, if you see my head turning on the right, because I have a second screen uh, where I can see what you write. And uh, as uh, we said, uh, this presentation is uh, already available on my GitHub account. And you have a HackMD uh, place where you can uh, ask your question and upvote the questions. And uh, Michael just put it again in the discussion uh, uh, chat uh, zoom chat uh, thing and i will be able to see the your votes inside so basically uh, you have a part for your questions and a part where i will ask questions to you so i will ask you to um, answer with little crosses when you know and when you want to share your information so let me go back to the slides and start with this, how to build a package with the R on the first method. I can increase a little the size here so that it's bigger. And just in case you cannot read it because you have a small screen, remember that this presentation is still available as PDF on GitHub. Um, so first, who am I? So am I Sebastian? I work at Thinkor. It's a French company where we do some expertise and some uh, uh, courses, everything we, uh, related uh, with R. We have a website where we can when where we share uh, our uh, blog post about different things about R, but also where we say what we can do for you. We have a GitHub account uh, with uh, many R packages. Some of them are already on the crown. Maybe you heard about Golem uh, for shiny applications. And you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow me on Twitter. And I have a personal website, which is called statandmap.com, where I share a little tricks about uh, R, about uh, maps also uh, with R. And what I have time to, to share with you. Um, what is this presentation about? As you heard, it will be about R Markdown and about packages. I will show you that you can write the code inside the Markdown and I will um, uh, invite you to start writing your, uh, your work inside R Markdown files and build your functions inside this Markdown files. And then with a little magic, but I would say with a little uh, work for me, you will be able to inflate this uh, Markdown file as a package. And I will explain after that why I call that inflate. So you have on the right, on the, on the left side, the a screenshot of the Markdown file and on the right side, a screenshot of what will be your uh, project after you inflate the package? But first, I will ask you a little question. Do you already work with all Markdown documents? And I will put this question inside the HackMD so that you can answer directly and so that I know you a little more. So there are some cross you can put inside. Do you work with Markdown documents? I already have every time. It's for me to know. Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So this presentation is for you. Perfect. So I do not really have to explain what will be uh, in the next two slides to explain you what is a Markdown document because none of you don't know what is a Markdown document, so that's perfect for me. It will be easier. Ah, some some will maybe say, okay, there is someone who doesn't know. What is Markdown document? Don't worry, I will present it in a few slides. 
I don't understand jokes, you know. Um, so I go back to my slides and I will go very fast on this uh, part, but I will just remember you why we use uh, Markdown files. It's to mix code and text. You have some the R code which is uh, executed in chunks, and it will be it will allow you reproducible and detailed analysis. Reproducible because when you uh, need your document, it will be executed in a different uh, R session, which assures you, which will force you to have some uh, all the information inside your your document. Um, it's a document that is easy to share, to distribute, and publish because you can create uh, HTML that you can share everywhere on the web. But to me, it's a good basis to document your analysis because you not only put some code, you will have to put some titles, some explanation about what uh, you are uh, writing in your code and why you are writing or choosing this different uh, code you want, your script. So you know how it looks like uh, Markdown. You have the YAML header with the metadata, the text with the Markdown syntax, and the chunks with the OR code. The Markdown syntax, you saw that in the hack MD, you can write this Markdown syntax and it will be uh, presented directly uh, uh, knitted with this uh, specific uh, website. So if you know how to write Markdown, you can use this website. And uh, when you knit this uh, document, you can knit it in uh, HTML, PDF, Word, or uh, like I do with my presentation with Sharingan. Uh, today. Um, in this presentation, I will uh, I will show you like um, uh, how to build a package based on the uh, data set. This uh, data set is uh, the New York uh, Squire Census uh, data set, which was presented uh, uh, two years ago in uh, Tidy Tuesday. So. If you don't know what's tidy Tuesday, you will be able to run this uh, this uh, up. I can put it in the hack MD so that you are that also available tidy Tuesday if you want to know more about it. And uh, in this data set, you have some uh, squirrels that are uh, reported, and we know what the color of the fur, we know when we saw it, uh, we know what it's doing, and everything like this. So I will this, use this, uh, this uh, data set as a basis for, for my package. Um, I already uh, did some analysis with this, uh, with this data. So basically, if I open my markdown file, maybe I can put it a little bigger so that you can see. So this is my markdown. I have a presentation of, of the data set, where it comes from. I have some part where I read the data. Uh, uh, so I read CSV, for instance. I have the part where I explore the data because each time you have some data, you explore it. And then I say, OK, I will do this uh, analysis every year. And I would like to be sure that uh, each time I add new new uh, data inside this data set, I want my Markdown file to still work. So I started to do some code to check that the data is still the same, uh, the same uh, every, every year. So here I have uh, something reduced, of course, for this presentation. And I checked, for instance, if the position of the squirrels are in Central Park and not uh, anywhere else in the world. Um, and I, if it doesn't work, I will put a stop. And I also check if uh, the reporters put the correct uh, color inside the correct column. And I, in the column that is called primary fur color, there is only one color and not multiple colors. And if not, I will stop the the, the code. After that, uh, after that, I am sure that the, the code is doing something correctly. I had uh, the part where I will plot the data because you will explore your data visually. And in this example, I put a ggplot uh, where I will be able to see the distribution of the different uh, squirrels uh, that are in my data set. 
And I chose to put a color specific for the fur color, I mean, the main primary fur color of the, of the squirrels. So this is a classical air markdown. And as uh, almost all of you said that uh, they already know, uh, already use markdown files, this is not very different from what you are used to, to use. Um, I could, uh, I could uh, um, knit it. And if I knit the, the markdown document, I have what you are expecting to, to have in this uh, HTML file. So now I go back to my presentation. So this is what most of you probably already do. But as soon as you don't work uh, alone, I will ask you a new question. Which of these situations have you already faced? So I put that in the HackMD again. Up. And I let you try to answer inside this hack MD. You can put some lines. You can still put some crosses inside. You can cross for one, for multiple. That's OK to me. There is a lot of things to read, so of course, I'll let you a little time to read that. Yeah. The A. Oh, someone just. I just put again the A. And there was a lot of cross inside the A, so I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. There are a lot of answers on D too, a little with B and a little with C. So that's good because you faced some uh, problems with your analysis and I am here to uh, help you deal with, this, uh, with these uh, problems. Uh, this is the first, the first question about the different situation. So you update and it doesn't work anymore because you know functions have changed. The behavior of functions you used to use uh, have changed and it uh, doesn't work uh, uh, anymore. You also do some um, little uh, modifications from uh, someone else, and you would like to know what break uh, what broke your your code. So perfect. And I have a second set of question about collaboration. So, which of this situation have you faced again about collaboration? Do you work alone? You know, when you work is or you do not really work alone. At some point you will share your, your code. I hope you do it. Hmm. In French, it would be D, the answer D, but that's good. <laughs> um, okay, you do some copy paste, but with some modification a little and you get some other, other uh, someone else code, and but you don't know which package to add, install because your code is very long. And uh, at some point, uh, the people, the person who wrote the code or wrote the script, just didn't uh, prevented you how to do it. Uh, copy paste from line from Stack Overflow or from the web is even worse, but that's okay. I mean, if you copy paste multiple times your your own code. Maybe you will think about something, uh, something else. And yeah, the one I will try to answer to is the E. You want you share your code, but the colleagues just come every day to ask you some questions. 
Why do they do that? Why do they come to your office and, or call you or send you emails about how to use your package, how to use your code? Perfect, package everything. That is the aim of my presentation today. So let's see how we can deal with these different problems. So I go back to my presentation. Uh, and I will propose you one way to deal with all these seven problems you may already have faced. And to deal with that, we will use packages. I do not say that it is the answer to everything, but I personally think, and I think or we all think that packages is the answer to most of your problem uh, with, uh, with uh, data analysis and with our code uh, in general. Because packages have a specific framework that um, forces you to work in a way that will help you avoid these different problems. So we will explore a package structure. Um, the package structure is, uh, is uh, specific. I mean, you already use some, uh, some uh, packages for your analysis, but um, this, these uh, packages are stored on your own computer. And the, the way they are stored on the computer is not the way they are built by developers, okay? So I will open a package attachment to one of the packages uh, we have at ThinkOr. And why is this one? Because probably if you never use packages, you don't know what this package is about. So let's see how it looks like. So I will go in the GitHub repository and see, okay, this is attachment. So the GitHub repository is open and you see that there are many uh, directories or images in test vignettes, a lot of files too. And inside you do not really see our code. Maybe you can guess that our code is a, in a directory which is called or. So as a developer, if I want to build a package, I have to build this structure. But you don't know this package, or maybe you do, but let's say that you don't know this package. Um, but you want to use it because someone uh, during a presentation uh, Thursday afternoon told you, eh, this package attachment is very nice. So you want to use it, but what to do? First, you need to know what does this package do, how to install it with probably all its dependencies, what are the functions inside this package? How to fit the parameters of the different functions that found uh, are interested? Can I have an example of, on how to use this function? Maybe a reproducible example. Can I have an example on how to use the package as a whole? Because maybe the functions um, are to be used in a specific uh, order. And will it work with the last version of OR and dependencies that I have now on my computer or that I plan to use uh, next week. To answer this question, as a user, you know where to find this information. So to know what does it do, you can go on the CRAN page of the package and I did not open it, but um, maybe I can also share it, but you know where to find it probably. Oh, sorry, uh, panelist in the chat again. So you have, uh, because this package is on CRAN, you have the presentation of, okay, this package does help manage dependencies during package development. So this is something for developers and it will help you to put all the dependencies that are inside your package in the description file. And if you already know what the package is, you know that is, can, it can be painful. So let uh, attachment do that for you. How to install is uh, the package with all the dependencies. You don't have to think about it because if the developer worked correctly, you just have to do install packages. And if there are missing dependencies, uh, this function will install all the dependencies. What are the functions? Some packages like attachment, you can call the question mark with the name of the package and you will go directly to the index. So if I 
of course, I didn't install attachment on this server. Why? I don't know why. Because I didn't really prepare this presentation. No, let me. I do. Um, so, question mark, the name of the package, and this package does not appear directly, but it can. And to be able to have this, I will go to the help page. So, okay, I can ask uh, the, the R to tell me uh, what to do and what are the different functions of this package. If I go to the help here, I can go to the index at the bottom of it, and I can see all the functions that are available to the user and what all these functions are doing. If I want to know how to, to, to fill the parameter of the function, I can also use a question mark and I will go inside the help of one function and I know all the parameters of the function because they are uh, written here. And then I have the presentation of how to fill these parameters, how to use it. You probably already know that, okay? Because you already went to the, to the um, help of your packages. You already went to the help of your functions. But that's not all. You can also have more uh, information on how to use this package. You can go to GitHub because there are some vignettes. So if I go to uh, GitHub attachment, there is a link here, which is a specific website of the package. And I have in articles some different vignettes. And this vignette is basically a markdown file where I explain how to use the package, in which order you used to use it, and how to reproduce the, the, the work of the package in a reproducible example in a dummy package here, for instance, or for other purpose. So this is a, a more um, complete presentation of what this package do. And to the question, will it work with the last version of OR and its dependencies? Then I can again go back to GitHub because as a developer, I care about you. And I built something which is called uh, the, the CI check. And if you go it, uh, to see it, there is this uh, green mark. And if I go to see specifically what's inside, and for one, the last commit, for instance, you can see that uh, I tested the package on different uh, OS. So I'm sure it works with Windows, Mac OS, and Ubuntu with the release uh, version of OR, but also with the future version of OR. So this is a lot of uh, work for a, for a developer, but as a user, you are usually happy to have all this information and be able to use the packages that are available to you, because you know there are uh, about uh, 18,000 packages on the CRAN, and I don't count the packages that are on GitHub and not the, on the CRAN, and you cannot know all of them just without the title, just with the title. So this is what you want to know as a user. But as a developer, how do I answer your question? How did I do that? What I did is um, I, to answer the question, what does it do and how to install it dependencies, I filled the description file. So if I go back again to my GitHub account, uh, there is a file which is called description, and in this file, I, I wrote the description of the package. I also wrote what dependencies you need to install it. Um, what are the function? How to fill the parameters of the function? Can I have example on how to use the function? You know that there are some reproducible example, if I go in the help of the function, that you can use and directly execute. How did I do that? I wrote it in the OR directory, and inside this OR directory, there are some OR script files with the different functions. And in this function, I put the documentation of the function, how to use the parameters, how to use with some reproducible examples. Um, can I have an example on how to use the package as a whole? Then I have this vignette. You saw it in the website, but this vignette uh, also of course, exists in a directory which is called vignette. It's a markdown document. Ah, now I go back, I come to the markdown thing. 
So this is a Markdown document that uses the function and explains with some text and more information to the user how to use this, uh, this package. And then will it work with the last version of OR and its dependencies? How did I do that? I did what I call the continuous integration, but it is also combined with some tests, some unit tests that I can see also in my um, GitHub uh, account. And there is a folder which is called test and test that because this is the package I use. And I have some different OR scripts that will test that um, uh, the different functions are working correctly as expected. And this uh, test, along with examples, along with this continuous integration, will ensure that uh, everything still works after uh, modification of the code or after the modification of the dependencies of my package. So as, as you see here, there is a minimum of four different places to store the code of the documentation when you are a developer. Description, or vignette, and tests. And I have, again, a little question for you. Have you already built a package with all of these? So I go back to my list of questions. I put that in the HackMD and whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, quiz, some of you deleted oh, part of my code or maybe I cannot see it. So question, have you already built a package with all this? or maybe you never built a package or maybe you did something in between. Yeah, I had the two extremes. Yes, test is a bit tricky, yes. For, for tests, you know, um, I will show you how to build a test in this presentation after that. Yes, package development is dynamic, functions are dynamic, but you always have some things to test and to stop the development. Um, okay, so I have people who already built a package with all of this, and I have people who never built any packages from scratch. Maybe you already participated in the development of packages from other people, or you did part of it, that's good. Um, perfect. This presentation is still for all of you. Don't worry. I'm coming to the point. So as you see, there are many things to set up as a developer and many things to remember. And maybe some of you just know what the Markdown is, but don't know what the package is. And as I can see in the HackMD, it's uh, half of you only only know the markdown thing and don't know what the package is or never build the package itself. And you have a markdown and you have a list of many things to do inside to build a package. Why do I tell you that the package is a good answer to your work? How will you, will you jump from the markdown to the package? What if there was a package that could take a flat RMD file. You know, I take a piece of paper and I just fold the, slide, the, the, the paper at specific places in a specific form. And at some point, I use the package. And when I inflate it, it does this paper box. It does the package itself. Let me talk about Fusen and inflate your R Markdown file with Fusen. Fusen will deal with the package structure. We don't have to think about it. We will just, yeah, I will put just in quotes, okay? Because there are still some work to do. 
at some point, all this work will have to be done. But you write your markdown file, you follow the folding lines to be sure that you are in the correct set, but you stay inside the markdown file. And when you have finished the folding lines, you can inflate with Fusen, and Fusen will put every file at the correct place for you. As you saw in the previous in the presentation, uh, there are four different places to store the code and the documentation. You have the description file, you have the R file, you have the test file, and you have the vignette uh, file, the vignette directory. This means that Fusen will need um, somehow to know uh, which code will go in in one in uh, all these uh, different uh, parts. So it means that the folding lines of the package of the R Magnon file will have to follow that. So when you will build your Markdown file, um, you will write your, your uh, Markdown as usual, okay? But I will ask you to um, separate what is a function, what is an example, and what is a test. Yeah, it's not really different from building a package. It's different because you write it in the same page. And the example, they will be used to fill the example of the function, they will be stay. They will also stay inside the markdown to be presented in the vignette. The test will be moved in the test, and the function will be moved in the function in the right place. So this is what the template of uh, Fusen will look like. It's a classical markdown. Write your markdown as if you were writing directly the vignette of your package. Um, the only thing I will ask is to uh, put this, um, this air markdown file in a specific directory, but you don't have to think about it. You, build a, you create a new package, you create, oh, sorry, you create a new or project empty of everything, and you just, you, I will, I will stop to say just, okay. You use the function add dev history. So let me show that. Okay, so I go to R Studio. I say file, new project. I start a new directory, a new project. It is an empty one, okay? Um, I can call it uh, my test today. I put it in the home directory here and, and I create a project. So this is a classical empty project, empty or studio project. It's basically a directory a folder uh, inside uh, on your on your computer. Then I run the Fusen at dev history. And what does it do? It creates a dev directory with a dev history inside. So this is the R markdown. And you have uh, the markdown with already the skeleton uh, of what I expect. Fill this markdown as if you were writing directly the vignette. So you have the first part, it say, okay, you have to fill the description. So what the title of my package, what the description, who am I? And you will have at some point have to define the license for your package. Once you have changed your name, for, the name for yours, you can run this and um, up, up, uh, I'm not in the right place, of course. Yes, you can run this, and on your uh, on your directory, you can see that you have the description file, you have the license, which is uh, written. You even have the or could ignore, but I am still in my markdown document. And uh, what can I do after that? Uh, okay, I want to read my data. So I put some data, I read it. Uh, the data is a specific part, you know, is special uh, on how to deal with data inside packages. So I will not uh, use this presentation to speak about uh, data, but let's say I am writing my uh, Markdown document, I am writing my vignette. 
And then I, I build a function. So I say, hey, at, at some point, I will, in my package, there is a, a function to, to calculate the median. So I have the function, I have the documentation. I have a specific chunk, which is called example, to write the median. I have the test and some other function, whatever. And at the end, I run this inflate. And you know, there are many things. The vignette is built, so the vignette is open. Here is the vignette of the code. You can see that there is only the code that is needed for the user. You can see inside the, the file that there are all new um, directories. So the R directory is here, the test directory is here, the vignette directory is here. And the package and the Fusen will, will uh, run the check for you to say, hey, is, there, is it okay or not? Of course, my check does not work, but it does work. I can assure you it's just this problem is a problem with my uh, server. But if I run the check in the, otherwise it will be okay. Um, if I want to see the, the specific um, uh, place for packages inside our studio, I need to, to restart my, uh, my project. And I have the, the new um, part, the build part for packages, and I can run the check. How does it work? So um, I did this for my uh, squirrel uh, data. Okay, so I will show you after that with the squirrel because the Devi story, which is uh, uh, presented here, is uh, one of the of the Fusen package. I have the description. So I, I add a new chunk in my markdown file. So let me think that you already have a markdown file, okay, where you have your analysis. What do I need to do to make it Fusen uh, uh, ready? So I have my previous uh, markdown uh, file uh, inside. It was in my, well, you saw it before my analysis. Ah, this is my markdown file that I use to, to do my squirrel analysis. Your own markdown file. What you have to do, you have to add a chunk named description and use field description, put your information inside and, uh, and uh, the license. And then you execute the code of the, of this, uh, of the chunk and you will have the description file. And you can see, you will be able to see in your directory that the description shall file appear and the license appear too. You have your script. I have my script uh, in which I already wrote some code. You remember, I wrote some code to check that my data, or my uh, new version of my data still continues to, uh, to be correct inside. So I will check that my scribers are the good place inside the, uh, 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 New York, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't remember the, the uh, Central Park. Oh, okay. Um, it's in the, in the good place. It's written here. So I just have to write my, to, to read my slide. Um, and I have a second uh, check in my uh, Markdown that, uh, that uh, check that uh, the primary for color is okay. This is not a function. Okay. This is a normal script. How do I transform it as a function? I add function X, I give a name to this function that uh, my user will be able to use. And here I transformed the, the name of the, the packet of the data set with X so that it's smaller, but I could have uh, kept uh, the name if I, if I wanted, but uh, this is for convention, okay? So I, I just modified the X, the New York squares with X to make it smaller, but I added the function. This is the function that will be able to test all my uh, data set from, uh, from a New York Squire. This function, I will put it inside a chunk, which is called function something. I can add this if I want to add some numbers, but this is just for you, okay? It doesn't have any influence on, uh, on uh, Fusen, but the, the chunk needs to be named function. You have to add your 
or oxygen uh, uh, documentation inside this chunk with uh, what does the different parameters, what does it return? Do you export the function? If you want to put the, the dependencies here, you can also add that. Then you have the examples. You create a new chunk or the chunk with your example will be a chunk name examples. Again, you can put the number if you want to for you, but uh, Fusen will just uh, check the example thing. I will build a reproducible example. So it's not the complete data set, but I, I built a, a small data set uh, for which I want to try my, uh, my function to show, okay, this is a reproducible example and my user will be able to execute that directly without having to download any, any kind of, uh, of data set. And I can run it if I want in my markdown just to verify it works because while I am building my package, while I'm building my functions, I can still execute the code because I, I am inside the markdown file. And then you have the tests. Someone said that the tests are tricky, but here um, I built an example. So I have a reproducible example. So I built a new chunk and I call it test. And I will have again to, to write my, my example, uh, my uh, specific example, because this part will be uh, moved inside the, the test uh, directory. And um, why I am able to do that? Because to, to test my code, to test my markdown, to run my code, I already have an example. You already um, use the data set to test that your function is working. So because you already have this function, you already have the reproducible example. So you already have the tests. What do you have, you have to do with the test? I create the same example and I say, okay, I run my, my function on it and I just verify that uh, the output of the function is good. In this example, I want my function to say all tests are good. But as I am here and because I build a function with some stops inside saying that there are some cases where it doesn't work. I can test the, the cases where it doesn't work. So each time I said, if this then stop, I can test it in my tests. So I create a new uh, reproducible example. It's a small one again. And I want to add a place where there is no unique color. And I test that I expect an error when I execute my function on my data set. You put that inside the test that uh, uh, functionality, the test that, uh, and then you can run it. So all this, the, the function, the examples and the test, you can run it directly inside the R markdown file. Okay, because this is a markdown file, so I can do it. And I think I have somewhere because I prepared this, uh, my package. Um, I already have the dev history file. So if I go to dev, I have my dev history file, which is here, which is here the dev history file of uh, my uh, squirrel thing. Okay, this is exactly what I showed you. And this one, uh, I can knit it. Okay, so I can verify that uh, it works correctly. So I can go in the web browser and uh, I can see the code of my dev story file. If, I, if it uh, works, it's okay. It's like uh, the, the code is reproducible. It's what you want. This is what you used to do, except that in this place you have uh, examples that is separated for the function and you have some uh, uh, unit tests that are uh, also inside the code. Up, go back to the presentation. And then you can also have earned some medals. And this is nice to have some medals of, on, or rainbows when you do some tests. And what about the vignette? You already have the vignette. The dev story file is the vignette. If I open it, you see, I have my markdown, I have my HTML, which is the vignette. But of course, in the vignette for the user, you don't want to have how you build your package. You don't want to have the function written inside because the function 
uh, will be directly available to the user so they don't have to run it again. So what you want in your vignette, you only want the text to present uh, how to use the function and you want the reproducible example. The test, you don't want them either because they will be in the package. And how you inflate the package, you don't want them either because they will be used just for you, for the development. So what will Fusen do? Fusen will verify the different names of the chunk. And if the chunk is named description, function, test, or development, it will be removed. And if the chunk is named examples, it will, be, it will stay inside the vignettes and it will build the vignettes. So in this dev history file, I have the code. I inflate the code with Fusen. I give a name to my vignette. I say, hey, I find a squirrel. And when I inflate the documentation, I build the vignette. And here is a vignette, which is, you know, you don't have this description. You just have the working example and how to use it. That's it. And of course, the text. And inside my package, I have all the rest everywhere. Like in the R directory, I have the function and the R for the, for the function with the documentation I wrote. I have the tests inside. Okay, with a test for my uh, my function, etc. So when we inflate uh, the function, uh, functions are uh, executed. So you feel the description, you feel, of course, the OR. You will um, um, run the the OR oxygen thing to to fill the manual, and uh, you will have examples. The examples are added inside the example of the function. So if I can see here, we can see that there is an at example thing inside the documentation of the function because it took the content of the example here to put inside the function along with the function. And the function stays also inside the, the vignette and the test output inside the test. And what about the vignette itself? Uh, the content, the text, and the example are put inside the vignette. This means that the dev history stays inside your package. Uh, this means that you have also, with this dev history, sort of um, documentation, plus plus, it means it's a documentation of the development. And it's also uh, interesting for the developer because this dev history, uh, at least for the first part, where you put your name and where you will put the different things that maybe some of you already used, like use Git or everything with use this, you've put that inside and you will be able to reuse the same dev history, or I mean, the first part of this dev history for all your packages. Um, so this is my magic of Fusen. So first you have the part, and then you have the entire package which is built for you. And you all only stayed inside the model. After that, if you want, you can go further. You can build the documentation of the package and build the site uh, of the package to, to see that, okay, all the documentation is available. So you have package to do that. I'm not sure I already built it. Yes, I built already there. So I can open up the, with package done, it builds this uh, this page. And I have the article with the find the squirrels, okay, with the vignette, and I have the reference with the function presented and with the example, which is executed because it has been added automatically. So how is this answers your original problem? You remember the, all these seven things that you told me, some of you told me that, yeah, I have this problem, how do I do? Unit tests, sorry, unit tests will be one of the main answer to all these uh, different questions. So I put uh, unit tests for A, B, C, D. What about your colleagues coming every day to ask you some question? You write a good vignette, you write examples, you have the package done website that you can share to them and they have something readable that can, they can use as they can, they have reproducible examples that they can use. 
Um, how to install description file and why do I spend my time to copy paste some line from one project to the other? You won't have to do that anymore because you have some functions inside a package and you can use this function in your own package to be used in all your uh, different uh, projects. So no more copy paste. We used to say one copy paste, you build a function and as soon as, as soon as you build a function, you have to build a package. Here I come to my conclusion, do RMD first for every project. This will force you to document. Documentation, the dev story is a documentation for you as a developer and it will finally be the documentation for the user, for your colleagues, for the people you work with for the people you want to share your work with. Start with the RMD as a sandbox. You can do whatever you want to try inside. You already do some scripts. You already do some modern things. So you know how it works. Document your function as soon as you've written the function. And because when you write a function, you already wrote a, uh, an example, you, write, you can directly present the reproducible example. And because you have a reproducible example, you can directly have write your tests. So think package, packages for everything, and don't hesitate to use Fusen and try it yourself. Uh, there are different uh, dev story files inside Fusen, some which is complete and some which are for more advanced user. But of course, I don't have to say that because I wrote Fusen with Fusen itself which means that if you go to see the, the dev history file of Fusen, you will see that this file contains the entire core of Fusen itself. So Fusen is built with Fusen. And of course, there is a complete documentation with the, with the package done and everything. So thank you for your attention. You can see more about Fusen uh, if you want. And of course, I will go to the hack MD to see if you wrote some questions to me. Maybe I can open it in the greater part so that I can see it more. So you have different questions and I will try to answer some. 